In the huge, quiet space, a great achievement of our time is nearing the end of its life. The International Space Station, launched in 1998, stands as a sign of human skill and teamwork. It now quietly shows signs of getting old and wearing down. Its corridors, once full of smart people, now are filled with sounds of old machines and hard-to-find air leaks. However, in this slow journey towards becoming outdated, a surprising new idea comes up. It challenges our usual thoughts about space homes and changes how we think about our future in space. The International Space Station is getting old and worn out. Launched in 1998, the ISS has been a cornerstone of international cooperation in space, serving as a microgravity and space environment research laboratory. However, over the years, it has faced issues like air leaks and aging hardware. This might not be a big secret, but what's really surprising is the solution to this problem. As the ISS nears the end of its operational life, expected around 2028 to 2030, there is an urgent need for a successor. And guess what? We don't need those new space stations like Orbital Reef, Axiom Space, or Haven 1. These stations, proposed by various companies, are seen as the next generation of space habitats. We've already got a great solution right here with us. Let me tell you about the space race. The modern space race is marked by the involvement of private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and others, in contrast to the government-led efforts of the mid-20th century. There's this spacecraft called the SpaceX Starship. Developed by SpaceX, Starship is designed for missions to Mars, lunar landings, and even point-to-point -point travel on Earth. It's not just any spaceship. It could be a space station, too. Its versatile design allows for multiple uses, including serving as a temporary space habitat. Sounds cool, right? This starship is actually an improved version of an older idea called the Interplanetary Transport System. First announced in 2016, the Interplanetary Transport System was SpaceX's initial concept for a Mars colonization vehicle. Elon Musk, a famous inventor, thought of this about 10 years ago. Musk's vision has been to make human life multi-planetary, with Mars as the key target. Its main goal was to take lots of people to Mars and build a big city there. The idea was to establish a sustainable human presence on Mars, starting with the first crewed flights proposed for the mid-2020s. But the Starship we see now is a bit different. Over the years, Starship's design and goals have evolved, focusing on increased reliability and versatility. It's designed more practically, with features like reusable stages and the ability to carry large numbers of passengers and cargo. But it's still aimed to take many people on long trips into deep space. These missions could include trips to Mars, the Moon, and potentially beyond. It's really important for the Starship to be a comfortable place for people to live during these trips. Hence, SpaceX has been working on life support systems, living quarters, and other amenities to ensure long-duration habitability. So, if it can keep people safe and comfy on a long eight-month trip to Mars, which involves challenges like radiation protection, waste management, and psychological well-being, it would be even better as a station near Earth. Near Earth, it could serve as a hub for scientific research, commercial activities, and as a stepping stone for deeper space missions. Of course, the Starship still has some problems. It hasn't gotten very high without exploding yet. Despite its ambitious goals, SpaceX's Starship has faced significant challenges in its development. The most powerful rocket ever built, Starship, experienced a series of issues during its initial launches. For instance, during its second launch, Although there were some improvements, like the successful lighting of all 33 Raptor engines and a novel stage separation technique, both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship upper stage ultimately had to be destroyed in mid-air. This process, known as Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly, was triggered by the Automated Flight Termination System. 
The specific reasons for these failures weren't immediately clear, but the data obtained from these moments provides valuable insights for future enhancements. But let's be optimistic and think that it'll be more than just a big, fancy firework. How could we use it as a new space station? The Starship, standing at 397 feet tall and approximately 30 meters in diameter, boasts a volume greater than that of the International Space Station. Its steel construction makes it suitable for modifications such as welding and cutting, opening up possibilities for use as a space station. The design flexibility of Starship, coupled with its large internal volume, presents opportunities for innovative configurations, such as a giant wheel of starships rotating to simulate gravity or being arranged in safe, low radiation orbits. The cost effectiveness of such a venture is also notable, with the potential to house hundreds of people for a fraction of the cost of the ISS. One great thing about the starship is its huge size, and I'm talking about space inside it, not how loud it is. The Starship's interior design is envisioned to support up to 30 crew members in both positive and zero gravity conditions, offering substantial living and workspace. The design includes multiple levels, each tailored for specific functions. The top part of the Starship, the fairing, is 18 meters high, and the whole thing is 9 meters wide. This vast space is efficiently utilized across several levels, including the flight deck, mess hall, crew ponds, fitness areas, science and storage spaces, and an extravehicular activity level. The flight deck, located at the highest level, is equipped with seats and control screens for piloting and monitoring the starship, similar to the Crew Dragon capsule but expanded for a larger crew. Even though it gets narrower at the top, there's still a lot of space. The mess hall, designed as the social heart of the starship, facilitates dining, socializing, and enjoying views of space. It features food preparation areas, dining facilities, and social spaces, all designed to maximize usability in both positive and zero-gravity environments. If we measure it, there are four big sections, each 7.3 meters high and 9 meters wide. The crew pods, located on one of the middle levels, provides personal space for sleeping, working, and relaxation, accommodating up to 30 crew members. These pods are designed for efficiency and comfort, with window-style display screens for outside views or personalized environments. Altogether, that's about 1,000 cubic meters inside, a bit more room than the ISS, which has 935 cubic meters. The fitness area, crucial for maintaining crew health during long-duration missions, include exercise equipment and personal hygiene facilities. It's engineered for efficient use of space, with equipment that can be stowed away when not in use. This space is huge, bigger than a big five-bedroom house. The science and storage level is essential for long-duration missions, housing the International Standard Payload Rack System for scientific experiments and ample storage for the crew's needs. Inside the Starship, there are designs showing what it might look like for a crew. Finally, the EVA level is dedicated for spacewalks and surface access, featuring a large cargo airlock and storage for spacesuits and scientific samples. This level also includes large equipment transfer capabilities, underscoring Starship's versatility for various mission types. If you can do this with one Starship, why not use two? Elon Musk believes these could cost only $20 million each. That's incredibly cheap for space stations. The International Space Station has cost over $150 billion to operate for more than 20 years. With such low costs, you could connect many starships into a large circle. This circle could slowly spin, creating artificial gravity. In this design, you'd likely need horizontal decks. NASA once had a similar idea. They thought about using the space shuttle's main hydrogen tank. It's a big orange tank used by the shuttle to reach space. The space shuttle is about the same size as a starship, but it's just an empty tank 
while a starship is a real spaceship. This all sounds perfect, right? NASA seems to agree. They've supported the SpaceX Starship as a potential new space station. At least, that's what the news suggests. But that's not entirely true. Here's the real story. In June 2023, NASA announced their support for seven different space station ideas. These are from private companies. The list includes a Starship-based station, but also ideas from Northrop Grumman, Blue Origin, and others. NASA isn't just focusing on the Starship. It's one of the many ideas. Importantly, NASA isn't funding any of these projects. They're part of NASA's Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2 initiative. This means NASA will offer technical help and data, but no money. But there are some big problems. Let's be honest, the Starship space station idea has some issues. The biggest problem is size. While the Starship's large interior is great, about two-thirds of it is unusable. This space is filled with engines, pipes, and fuel tanks. That's more than half the ship. The Starship needs to work as a rocket before becoming a space station. Maybe engineers can make the lower part useful, but it's a tough problem. Right under the cargo area is a methane tank, sealed by a steel dome wielded into the ship. To use this space, you'd have to remove that dome. That would require tools like a plasma cutter or a diamond blade saw, and after opening it, you'd be doing construction work in space. This challenges the idea that using Starship as a space station would be simple and cheap. Another big problem is that Starship lacks input and output options. It's similar to a MacBook Air in this way. Not many places to connect things. For comparison, the International Space Station has many ports and attachments like docking areas, airlocks, and solar panels. Starship's exterior is sleek and shiny, making us question its ability to function like a space station. It's supposed to have a docking port in the future, but it's unclear if it can have more attachments. Also, as a rocket, its outer shell must be strong and aerodynamic to travel through the atmosphere at high speeds. This requirement adds another challenge. Starship designs often show lots of windows for an amazing view of space, but it's not yet proven if a window-covered Starship can survive a launch. This needs testing before making assumptions. The most practical use of Starship might be as a heavy-duty launch vehicle. It doesn't need to be a huge space station itself. Instead, it could deploy large space modules. These could be around 8.5 meters wide and 7 to 10 meters long. With just a few launches, a large space station could be in orbit. Plus, the Starship's use could return to Earth, a double benefit. If SpaceX's Starship become our new space station, how do you think it will change the way we explore space and live beyond Earth? Share your creative thoughts, smash that like, and subscribe for more.